This is lesson 27, BHDL example 14. And you remember in the last example we saw how to turn on individual digits of the four seven segment displays. And the question was how could we display different numbers like one, two, three, four on the seven segment display? And as you might have guessed, to do that we have to multiplex the seven segment displays. Now you remember that the, we had the signal AN3 down to zero. So AN3 controls this leftmost digit, AN2 controls this one, AN1 this one, AN0 this one. So if you make AN3 zero, that will enable this and whatever A to G is will be displayed on this one. If you make the AN3 one, this will be blank. And the same for AN2 one and zero. So, the idea is to display different digits, different numbers, on each seven segment display. You would bring one AN low. For example, AN zero goes low, then digit zero would be displayed. The other three are high. Then you'd bring AN one low, digit one would be displayed. You'd change the A to, A to G to make it a different digit. You bring AN3 low, then AN2 low, and then AN3 low. Now if you do this fast enough, say this total refresh period 1 to 16 milliseconds, then your eye will integrate and it will look like all four digits are on at the same time, even though only one really is on at the same time. Let's illustrate this. Suppose you wanted to display a 3 in the leftmost digit. You'd set AN3 to 0, then AN2, AN1, and AN0 would be 1. That would only enable this digit. A to G would be this to turn on a 3. You would turn off E and F, you see, and that would display a 3. You'd hold that on for a few milliseconds, and then you would if you wanted to play a 7 here, you would make AN2 be 0 with the other ones 1. And you'd change the A to G to be the code for a 7, turning on A, B, and C. You'd hold that for a few milliseconds. And if you wanted to display a 4 here, you would make AN1 0, change the A to G code. And then if you wanted to do an F here, you would change the a to G code and make AN 0, 0 with the others 1. And then you just do it over and over again. Refresh it fast enough so your eye would integrate it. Okay, to see this, we're going to do it by hand, so you're, you're going to be able to turn on one digit at a time. So the goal is to display, say, 1, 2, 3, 4 separately on each of the, uh, on each of the digits of the 7 segment display. We'll do that, we're going to have to multiplex it. So we'll need a multiplexer. And what we want to do is we want to put in a 16-bit hex digit. That is x15 down to 0. And we want to display that on the 4, 7 segment display. So for example, let's put in 1, 2, 3, 4 hex. Then the 1 would be hex 15 to 12. The 2 would be x11 to 8. The 3 would be hex. 7 to 4, and the 4 would be hex 3 to 0. So this is going to be a, a 4 line 4 to 1 mux, so we need an S1 to 0. So if this is going to be 0, 0, we'll let A through, so we'll let digit 0 come through to this signal digit 3 down to 0. And then if this is 0, 1, then B gets through, which would be x 7 to 4 and so forth. 1, 0 would let x11 to 8 through, and 1, 1 would let x15 to 12 through. Then digit 3 would go into our hex 7 seg decoder, so out comes a to g. Now we just have to control a n 3 to 0, so that when we want to display x15 to 12, only a n 3 is 0. Well, we'll use the buttons so you can do it by hand. Let's bring the buttons in here. If you're not pressing any buttons, then 
these are all zero, we'll go through an inverter, so these will all be one and all the digits will be blank. If we press, let's press digit zero to begin with. If we press digit zero, then AN zero will go to zero and S we want to be zero zero. So if we press button zero here, we'll make a table here, we want the two S's to be zero zero. We're going to have to write a little logic circuit for button to S to convert buttons to S here. So if we press button 1, we want S1 and S0 to both be 0 so that A gets through, that is X3 to 0 gets through. And we'll display the rightmost digit. If we press button 1, then we want S1 to 0 to be 0, 1. So we have 0, 1 here, so B gets through the multiplexer and we display the next digit in our 1, 2, 3, 4. This would be displaying a 3 then. And A, N, and, and we want A, N, um, since we just invert it, when we press button 1, it goes to 1, so A, N, 1 will go to 0, which will enable that digit. If we press button 2, we want S1 and S0 to be 1, 0. That's going to let through C which will be 11, x11 11 to 8. And finally, if we press button 3, we want it to be 1, 1. So, let's try it. We need to find out what the logic equations for S1 and S0 are. Well, we can just read those off. Here's the truth table. We want S1 to be 1 when we're pressing either button 2 or button 3. So that's just button 2 or button 3. And over here we want S0 to be 1 when either button 1 is 1 or button 3 is 1. <coughs> so S0, S0 is just going to be equal to button 1 or button 3. Okay, <coughs> well let's write a top level program and we call it MUX 7 seg top to indicate it's a top level program. And in this case we're going to do something a little different. If you go back to here, it looks like we have you know, three different components. We have a logic equation here, but remember we made a component already, MUX 7 seg, and we had this uh, 4 to 1 MUX. We've done uh, 4 to 1 MUXs before. So um, we could make separate components and then port map them together and have a top level program. The problem with that approach is that every time you want to display a four-digit hex number, 16-bit one, you would have to load in your hex 7 seg VHDL file and your uh, MUX, uh, you know, four, four to one MUX program. That's sort of awkward. It would be much easier if we could have a single program called MUX 7 seg, for example, uh, in which we could have all of these in one VHDL program. And we can do that by just making this a process and this a process, as we'll make the multi four to one multiplexer a process and the hex seven sega process. So that's what we're going to do here. So our top level design will have the buttons three down to zero. These will be the buttons you push to turn on each, each of the digits. A to G is the output that goes to each of the seven segment displays, and then AN3 to 0 is the enable signal, and also we have the decimal point. We'll turn that one off, so, but that's an output. So here's the entity. These are all in the UCF file. So here's the architecture. We need a signal X, 15 down to 0, and that's going to be the input to the multiplexer. And we need a signal S, 1 down to 0, that's also an input to the multiplexer. And then digit is this 4-bit uh, signal that we have, it's the output of the multiplexer and the input to the 7-segment decoder. So, here's our little program. We're going to set X to 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll just fix this, the hex value 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's a 1, 2, 3, 4 going to be coming in here we'll have to connect these. Um, and then AN is the output. Well, that's just not button, so we can say AN is not button, where button's the input here. And then 
this signal S1 and S0 we had we figured that out those were just button 2 or button 3 and S0 is just button 1 or button 3 and DP will set to 1 to turn off the decimal points then here is the quad 4 to 1 mux so here's a quad 4 to 1 mux that is we have four lines coming in here and we just make a process remember how we did uh, 4 to 1 mux was using a case statement process s when s is 0 0 we want digit the output here to be x3 down to 0 x3 down to 0 is coming in here you see when s is 0 1 then di digit is 7 down to 4 we'll let b through when s is 1 0 one zero. We're going to let C through. That is, we want digit to get X eleven down to eight. And when others, in particular one one, <coughs> then digit is going to let the D through. That's going to be X fifteen down to twelve. So that's all it is. There's the quad mux. And then we just need the seven segment display. <coughs> well, the hex seven seg. We'll just make it a process within this top level design, you see. This is exactly the same one we had, uh, you know, in the previous lesson where the process digit, when it's 0 to F, then we get the A to G's coming out. So that's it. So you can uh, implement this program, download it to the um, uh, your FPGA board, and when you press button 0, it should display a 4 in the rightmost digit. When you press button 1, it should display a 3 in the second digit from the right. When you press button 2, it should display a 2 in the second digit from the left. And when you press button 3, it should display a 1 in the leftmost digit. So you can keep pressing digits 3, 2, 1, 0, and it should display 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, you just have to do it fast enough, then you can see them all at once, which means that instead of with buttons here, we need to somehow make S1 to 0 count very fast, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, in which case this would display whatever X is very rapidly. We'll show how to do that in the next lesson.